All right, today I have a video that's been highly requested over the past few years, especially recently with spring happening. Everybody's trying to get out, get their cars fixed, and of course, tuned up. Now what this video is all about is how to change the spark plugs properly on the 4.6 liter, 5.4 liter, and the 6.8 liter two valve engines. Now these ones don't have the problem where they get stuck in the head and breaking off and all these procedures to get them out. What they have a problem with is blowing out of the head, coming out too easy. And the reason for that is because the, the amount of threads that are on the head itself where the spark plug screws into, they're, they're it's, it's very shallow. So there's only a couple of threads in there from the grip onto. So these plugs are not put in properly and they're not torqued properly. They can actually start backing out and they'll blow out of the head. Now the first tip I can give you is to over torque the spark plugs. Yes, I said over torque them. The reason being is the manufacturer torque spec is in the low teens and what happens is that since there's only a few threads in the head there, when it screws into, what happens is they vibrate loose a little bit and they blow out of the head soon thereafter this spark plug tune-up job. Uh, so what we, we do is we torque them around 20 to 25 foot-pounds and they'll never ever have a problem. That's the first tip I can give you and I'll show you how to do, how to feel for that in case you don't have a torque wrench. Also, the only plug that I recommend is Motorcraft spark plugs, the latest and greatest version from Motorcraft for your vehicle. I don't recommend the E3 plugs, I get a lot of questions about E3 plugs, um, uh, Champions, uh, the Bosch Quattros, the Bosch Super Rapid Fire freaking plugs. Don't get any of that stuff unless you have a, a, a souped up engine, a race engine, you're running advanced timing, you're running a tune, something like that. Most of you are running a regular you know, factory tune and you're just using it as a daily driver. You want it to be as reliable as possible and you want it to idle as great as possible and, and, and all that. So what you want to use is just the stock OEM plugs. I'm telling you, even the auto lights are giving us problems nowadays, whereas back in the day, they were kind of, uh, you know, vice versa. They're just the same thing. Uh, as the Motorcraft ones. So just stick with Motorcraft, you'll never have a problem. All right, so I'm gonna show you the process on the passenger side of the vehicle. Both sides are basically the same. Once you get the idea of the first one, you start off from the front and you get a good sense of it. You can then go into the ones in the back that are a little harder to get to with confidence. So first thing you wanna do, no matter how clean this engine appears, is clean it out with some compressed air. It's always the best, best option. You'll find if you don't, you pull the coil out, you look down in there, a bunch of, be a bunch of gravel and sand and garbage down in there, and once you pull the plug out, it's all going to go down in the cylinder. It defeats the purpose of taking care of the engine. So we're going to clean up this whole area, and we're going to clean around the boots of the coil right here, okay? And then once the coil's out, there's liable to be more garbage falling down in there. So before you pull the plug out, we're going to blow it out again very, very well. And then, of course, once the uh, plug is out of there, we're going to blow out, out the uh, cylinder itself in case anything fell down in there. And, of course, that'll clean the threads on there of any kind of uh, debris. Like, I see rust a lot on the threads on these. So, that'll clean that all off of there so we don't cross thread going in. All right, so the first thing you want to do is get this connector off here. They like to stick on here, and we're going to fight that off of there before we start loosening the coil. It's going to make it 10 times worse. So all you got to do is get underneath it and push in on a tang underneath here. You'll feel it, and then we're going to push in on the actual connector and release the tang, and then we're going to pull the whole thing off. And then we're just going to get it out of the way. After that, there's a seven millimeter bolt on each one of these coils. They're all individual on this engine. So we're just gonna pull that out. We're gonna get the seven millimeter bolt off to the side and away from the spark plug hole. And then we can simply grab it, wiggle a little bit, and then it should start working its way out of there. Now what you gotta watch out for on these is the oil. See all the oil around the boot on here? A lot of times it gets down to where it actually meets the spark plug and the center electrode, the porcelain all on down there, and that'll cause misfires. And that's maybe the reason why you're in here in the first place. Uh, Tune your vehicle up. Well, if you replace the coil or you replace the spark plugs, the fix is only temporary. 
that well is going to fill up with oil again and it's going to misfire again. And the root cause of that, believe it or not, is seepage over the years from the valve cover gasket. It just takes a while and it finally fills that spark plug well up in there. Now if the coil is working otherwise and you fix the valve cover gasket leak, you can get replacement boots for these and they should be changed out. You'll notice, especially when the oil is down in here, by a spark plug causing a, enough to cause a actual misfire, the whole boot down here is going to be swollen from the oil. So these are available separately. You don't need to buy a whole coil. And you can pop new boots on there and you'll be good to go. Always a good idea to clean it out a second time. Now as far as getting it out of there, what you usually need is a 6 inch extension and a 3 inch extension. I only have two 3 inches at this current location I'm working at today. Um, and then of course a 5 8 spark plug socket. That's a specialty socket with an um, insulator on the inside there. And it has a little bit of flex to it and it'll keep the tip of the spark plug porcelain breaking in there. It's also a good idea to have a, a, a universal right here so in case you flex when you're actually turning it, it won't transfer the flex down in here and crack the porcelain either. So 3 8 ratchet's a good size to go with in general because it, it limits the amount of torque you can put. All right, found our extension. So we're gonna get deep down in there just like that and then you just simply start loosening it. You shouldn't hear no abnormal noises like screeching or cracking. Those are never good signs. The two valve plugs uh, on the 5.4 usually are not a problem. And once you get so far, you can just do it by hand like this. It actually be a little bit faster. And also with that rubber insulator and the spark plug socket, it'll grip it and pull it out of there. Something like that. Look at the gap on that sucker right there. Absolutely huge. This this spark plug probably has a gap of 60 to 70 thousandths on it, whereas the, the spark plug gap on these is 54 thousandths. So we'll check it real quick. It's just a huge gap in there. Yeah, we're at 62 thousandths right now, and it just falls right in there. So we're probably closer to 65 thousandths. All right, so like I said, make sure you blow out your spark plug well. Uh, once again, before you put anything back in there, uh, you want to get one of these long reach ones like this and get way down in there and then start blowing it out of there. Now going back in there, just make sure all your plugs are gapped to 54 thousandths. That should be a spec for just about all these uh, engines. Uh, verify your spec for your particular vehicle, obviously. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there. Very small amount is all you need. And then you simply put it into your spark plug socket. It'll hold it. And then we're going to put it down into the well on here and do it by hand. You want to do it for, I don't know, three, four turns by hand. You should be able to feel it. Because once you put that ratchet on, a 3 8 ratchet, you're not going to have the feel that you do when you're doing it by hand like this. And I can feel it's fine. Got quite a few threads started on there, and now there's no chance of cross-threading on there, so that's a good thing. So then you can finish the rest of the way on here. Now there is a few caveats to this engine, this particular engine, and it has to do with the design of the spark plug and the heads on here where they screw into. Get this one tightened down. Okay, so right there it stopped, right? What you gotta realize on these, that the spark plug threads on them, uh, there's not that many of them, especially down in the head itself. Therefore, they're prone to blowing out on here. So if you follow the manufacturer's spec of 13 foot-pounds, you might have them back out enough where they actually blow out of the, um, the engine on there. That caused a lot of damage. So what you do is you get it tightened to where it stops like that, a dead stop. I obviously hit the seat area right here. 
okay? And then we're gonna go a little beyond the manufacturer's spec on here, and we're gonna tighten it closer uh, to 20 some foot pounds, maybe 25, 22, somewhere in that region. So once you have it on there, okay, right there's a dead stop, you see that? That's where it just you can just totally tell it just dead stop. We're gonna go another eighth, I would say, to a quarter. And it's all in the feel. And you'll never have a problem with these blowing out. Now going back in with your coil, make sure if it had any kind of oil or dirt on it, we clean it off. And then we're gonna look at the bottom here. We're gonna put a little bit of silicone dielectric grease on there. You just need a little bit. And that'll insulate uh, the tip of it there so there's no um, electrical arcing down in, this, in, this, in the spark plug well. And I'll keep it insulated to the porcelain. Now, if you're at 100,000 like this one is right here, uh, what they're prone to is at 100,000, 110,000, these coils, they start to fail under load, under high heat situations. Uh, so if you're in here and you're doing all this work already, you may want to change these out, but beware of the aftermarket coils. They do, um, they do cause a lot of problems down the road that you never had before, even with the old ones. So I'll go with Motorcraft only. And all of these are DG508s from Motorcraft. And I'll put a link down below in the description for the ones from Amazon. They're a lot cheaper and they're still Motorcraft ones. They're just bulk pricing so they get uh, a great deal from Amazon. After that, you just put it down in there. You just kind of wiggle it down in there and it'll self-center onto the spark plug center electro itself. And it'll kind of stop right here where it hits the intake. You'll feel it. And then you just simply put your screw back in there. Again, because this is plastic with a brass insert, you don't want to start stripping that out on the intake. So I'm going to do it by hand real quick, and then we can finish tightening with a ratchet. And these, you just snug them by hand, and it'll never come out again. There's no actual torque spec that you need to know on these. And then, of course, don't forget your electrical connector. Put it all the way on there, okay, until it clicks, like so. And that way you know it's locked down there. It's not going to come off going on the road. And that's about it as far as doing spark plugs on these. You just got to follow along one by one. What I would do is pull all of these coils out, okay, get the hoses out of the way, and then just concentrate on plugs. Boom, 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 one at a time, one cylinder at a time, open up. And that way there's less uh, components in this area, so it'll make it easier to get these back ones if these front coils are gone and all that. So um, just pull all the coils out first and then go after all the plugs, and then you can start reassembling. All right, now for this side, on the passenger side, a few tips I can give you is that if you really have big hands or you just want the extra working room, is to disconnect these three connectors in the PCM, and there's a couple 10 millimeter screws, and then of course a bracket behind that, that bolts to a firewall, and you can get this bracket, PCM, and everything all out of the way, and you can stick your hands through here to get to the back coils on there. Makes it a lot easier. I did it without, but then again, I'm used to getting in these tight spaces like this. Now, as far as the driver's side here, it's pretty straightforward. It's a little bit easier to get to everything over here. The few things you wanna do, this little triangle bracket right here for the uh, power steering reservoir, you're gonna wanna pull a three eight millimeter screws out and get this thing out of the way. And now you can see there's a lot more room to get to these two coils, these two front coils on here. It makes it a lot easier. And when you pull the plugs out and going back in, it's a lot more of a straight shot. So there's less chance of stripping them or cross threading them. Now, probably the only other thing on this side that is uh, kind of hard to get to is the hold down bolt right here for coil number seven. Uh, you got to use a swivel, a universal of some sorts, and really get in there because you can't put an extension on there and grip it correctly because it's going to cock off to the side when it hits the pressure regulator here. So uh, besides that... This whole side, you know, once the engine covers off, it's actually pretty straightforward and empty on this side. 
no big deal. All right, so hopefully this takes some of the fear out of doing spark plugs on these engines. For some reason, everybody is a little freaked out by uh, the doing spark plugs on these because they're individual coils on them. If you follow my tips and, and tricks and everything I go through, and you just follow my lead, you can easily do these on a weekend in your garage, and of course save a lot of money, and you'll probably get it done uh, the right way compared to a shop that's never touched this particular engine, especially that over-torquing tip that I gave you. That's very, very important.